know, I just, I, I like to make it a point to start stream with high energy because it gets my blood pumping, gets me excited, but uh, man, kind of wears me out. <laughs> It's just that's, my body reacts to music, bro. It's powerful. What can I say? I'm a big fan of music. What are you, you going to do about it? Watch me listen to it? Yeah, ladies and gentle bitches. Today we're diving into the brand new album from literally my son. I feel like I'm his damn father. I feel like I've grown up with this artist through their music. The young boy Glaive. Can we get a round of applause? Thank you! I want to dive into the glaive today. F head first, dude. Cannonball, head first, double flip, uh, full spinny throttle into the new glaive album. I first found this kid from his EP called Cypress Grove, I believe. And that was back in what year? 2020. Okay, well, shit. It's only like three years. Fuck. Uh. Damn, he's done a lot in the last two years. Maybe that's why I feel like I've been in with him for so long is because I feel like his music just kind of like brings you into his own kind of angsty teenage world. We started off with a lot of hyper pop influence. He had that whole like album with Eric DOA, which I think is really, really sick too. One of my favorite tunes on there from Glaive in general is on that album. So hell yeah. It's called Heather. <laughs> Can we just for a second, one moment. Oh my God. But today, oh today, we are getting into the boys, I guess technical debut. Is it his technical debut? Anybody in chat know? God, debut albums, Jesus Christ. I just, I can't keep up, dude. My friend Dev made a whole video about debut albums and kind of like how ridiculous that whole, the whole concept this kind of becomes. So definitely go watch that. I care so much that I don't care at all is Glaive's debut full length studio album following his deluxe EP, Old Dog New Tricks. I w dude, if there's something I regret, it's not doing a video for Old Dog New Tricks. Oh my God. I just revisited that album this last weekend, and holy shit, dude. If there's anything that that album proves is that you can teach, uh, well, he's not an old dog. He's actually a very young dog. <laughs> but he can, he can do anything, bro. I, I believe in this kid. I, I think he's got a great sound. Album art, looking phenomenal. He's recently been having this, like, satellite dish, this enormous communicator, like, in a lot of his, uh, his releases. And I feel like having it as a whole focal point of this entire album kind of symbolizes to me that he's just really trying to reach out, reach somebody to hear him, to hear what's going on in his mind, what's what's been what he's been feeling like, like to the extent that he needs an entire goddamn satellite dish. And having him be in the frame too, but also be out of focus gives like a nice perspective of like maybe how he might feel like he is personally, you know, out of focus without a direction. He's even honestly been changing up his production style for so much of these releases. I I thought this was gonna be like another like sample driven, hyper pop kind of like fast drum album. No, no. We've seen the departure in Old Dog New Tricks. We got a little bit of experimentation. Now, I feel like he is solely in this cool funk of this band aesthetic, of this like very niche, growing up in this time period, but still reaching back into like the 90s and 2000s, kind of like punk pop energy, but not in the way where it's like commercialized, kind of like how it is now, but it's like really like cool indie setups. Like I just appreciate the guitar work. I appreciate everything. And I'm gonna shut the hell up now. I care so much that I don't care. Well, guess what, dude? I care, bro. I freaking care, dude. I care so much. I'll care more than enough for both of us, okay? 13 sad. <laughs> 13 songs, 35 minutes, and 41 seconds. Almost kissing 36. First track is, oh, are you bipolar one or two? I don't know, I might be both, but we're gonna figure it out. Piano. Should I sit my ass down? Oh, I'm gonna sit my ass down. The moment I turn 23, I'll grab the gun my father gave to me on my birthday when I turn 17. God, I'll even play a no right next to me. Let me fuck all my friends say. Once you to the finger, fuck around and I'm dead. Well, don't believe what the bride said. I did this for me and no one else in the best way. To all of my friends, you know.
Man, oh damn. Oh. Holy shit, man. And then Fantana will give it a light four. <laughs> I'm not letting that dumb. I'm not letting that Dominic Fike album go. You son of a gun. Dude, this is so good, man. God, this is so painfully, so horrifically sad. Clearly he's he's talking about, you know, the last moments up until committing. Um in the edit, if we could get maybe a trigger warning <laughs> before before we get into the the lyrics, because um, this is this is straight up reading uh, reading like uh, thirteen reasons why. Yeah, straight up like this is he's this is like reading off his his note. You know, I started listening to this kid when he was fifteen, and now he's eighteen, and he's releasing someone like this. Man, oh dude, how did, how does it not how does it not just absolutely rip you up from the inside, dude? Posing his glazed note, as well as the album's opening track, it reflects on his desire for death and how he wants those around him to handle his. Setting his wishes to those important in his life, he ends the first verse by expressing that he's proud of who he was and that he worked for everything himself. Using imagery to take his own life during the chorus, emphasizing his desire to leave this world behind. Throughout the second verse, Glaive sends out his final words and reiterates that he only wants those that cared for him from the start to care for him when he's gone. Damn, dude. Damn. He said, if you're not here with me since the jump, then I don't want you. Oh, wow, dude. That's, that's, that's such an intense statement, dude. That is intense as fuck. Reflecting on how he's now a disgrace for committing suicide, believing that it was his destiny. As the track comes to a close, the instrumental cuts off as Glaive finishes his last words, unlike most tracks where the instrumental goes on, symbolizing the power of his words and the start of his story. Fuck, dude! Dude, whoever wrote this knows what the fuck is up, dude. Wow, okay. You know, sometimes we get like chat GPT paragraphs in these genius descriptions because it's genius. But this one is this one's hitting, bro. God damn. Um, yeah, this is a ridiculously well written. Uh, almost reminds me how good like Billie Eilish kind of is at writing. Like this is coming from the same unbelievably honest place in the songwriting. Damn. I'm so glad I, I'm listening to this album. Holy shit. Holy shit. The next track, because we must move on, is As If, dude. As freaking if, bro. How angsty is that title? I love how angsty that title is, bro. It is just, uh, I love it. It's it's right there, you know? And we get to start off with old Willy Wonka himself. So quiet up and listen down. Nope. Scratch that. Reverse it. Dude, where was my Willy Wonka call? What the fuck? I've been putting in work on this channel. Acting goofy as fuck for you guys. Ridiculous edits. By the team. Shout out to the editing team right quick. Gan Who. Also known as Chris. Also known as Gan Who. Also known as Chris. And then Star. And Donovan. And JJ. Honestly, dude. Alright, let's get into it. Let's get into it. Because I'm young? Yeah? All my life I've been young, so I never get a turn. <laughs> I gotta get a restart. Wasn't a good, wasn't a good start. You ever feel, you, you ever feel like that? Like you start a song like kind of weird or like the GPS fucking ways? You son of a bitch. I love you to death, but if you interrupt my favorite song one goddamn Why do I have to listen to you when you have zero to say? Because I'm young? All my life I've been young, so I never get a turn. Oh. <laughs> Hyper aggressive if I'm honest, I can't stand to be my friends are so progressive, they call me faggot a year ago oh. Then I couldn't what cut the them fuck? off because then I'd be on my own Being obsessive sounds depressing, but it's just the way it goes Just oh. the way it goes just And will that ever fucking say As if I'm, as if I'm ever change oh so powerful so powerful like bro oh 
painting this whole picture of these shitty ass friends too in the beginning, but in the kind of way that you can feel like he's taking it out on himself just to respond to that bullshit with as if I'm ever gonna change, dude. Oh my God. I just, I love the message of the song. It's just a huge fuck you to all the people in your life that are just so toxic and unnecessarily fucking mean and cruel and jealous. Oh, I fucking love it. Oh, I am 28 years old. <laughs> So powerful, bro. Honestly, it's kind of a cheat code when you put like really powerful, like a really powerful performance from like a movie or something that's like noticeable. I don't actually know what that's from. I do think it is Timothy Chalamet. I, I recognize the uh, voice crack. What am I, dude? Going through puberty still? Holy shit. I am 28 years old. Oh, it's not from a movie. It's from a play. Oh, you know what? I actually like that even more. What an absolute, uh, Playophile, Glaive. What do you call somebody who's like really into plays? From his high school performances? Dude, holy shit. He must've like gotten in contact with like Nardwar or something. That's crazy. I just imagine Nardwar just somewhere in like a vault somewhere with just ev everybody, every single celebrity, everybody, congressmen, all of their secrets just lined up waiting for that, that one interview. Mr. Bush, well, we must know what happened on 9-11. <laughs> Sorry, uh, last thing about As If, I just wanna say, it just feels so much like this like coming of age story. And it fits so perfectly in the way that I feel like a lot of Glaive fans might have found him. It's produced by, again, Jeff Hazen and uh, Ralph Castelli, uh, re really providing a lot of the great kind of like indie soundtrack vibes. Moving into the next one is I believe we might have heard this one on stream, uh, but it's titled with numbers, secretive, okay, interesting. 17, 20, 17, you're not gonna beat me today. Numbers, son of a bitch, listen, listen here. 17, 250. Yes! Oh yes, with the guitar, dude, the acoustic. Sounds like from an iPhone. I woke up this morning on someone else's mattress. Don't mean Ooh. to be a bother. Getting cauterized? What a bar! Oh, so damn scared of the sound it'll make on the ground. Oh, oh dude, this, I'm sorry, I gotta pause it, but but as he's saying, he's scared of the sound that it's gonna make on the ground. You can hear this like this feedback pitch coming in from the left ear. Oh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful production. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. But what the fuck just happened? <laughs> Oh, to fade away back to this? But what the fuck just happened? <laughs> God, the, the, the instrumental explosions going on feel so good. Oh, I love that, bro. He's just, he's nailing this whole band dynamic. Starting off with, I never hoped for the best, but I'd be surprised if it got any worse, I swear. <laughs> Also, the uh, in the chorus, the you're hot to touch, my dear, I keep getting cauterized. Like, he can't stop going back for more, even though he knows it's, it's bad for him. Oh, dude, that is so spicy. I love it. A lot of tension in a lot of these uh, instruments. And, and I love that feeling, especially with his kind of, like, breaking strong, but, like, still kind of, like, breaking through the emotion type of voice. Let's get into the, into the like, non Terra, you know, traffic territory of the album now with the fourth track, Party Urgent Care. Par D spelled P A R D E E. Am I missing something, bro? Oh, it's Urgent Care in his hometown? Oh, shit. 
Oh, wait, why are we at, wait, wait, why are we at urgent care? Oh, God. Keep me in the waiting room and never know what you will do anymore. Oh, the acoustic chords. You'll hate the words I say to you, you never want to hear the truth anymore. Is that a little ukulele? I can seem to see the signs of anything anymore, anytime, never mind. Yep. I like how he breaks the structure. You told me I should kill myself with pills to stay inside my shell. I know for a fact I deserve it. Deserve it. So keep me away. Oh, the suspension. Dude, it's it's super wordy, but I feel like it's on purpose. Oh, you that's cool. Me. Oh, yo, the the little lead that comes in with like the mandolin, but it's also getting this like little fuzzy synth treatment. Oh, very cool. Okay. Bye. I'm tired. <laughs> I'm tired. I'm exhausted. I feel you, boys. The production is crazy, and it's staying crazy. Uh, first thing I'm noticing is that the the uh, the mixing on a lot of these aren't aren't like super duper congruent with each other. But I don't mind it. I don't mind it. You know, it's it's an angsty kind of album. He's the kind of artist that I feel like is okay with clearly having his mic, you know, clip in the songs. You know, that guitar solo was so sick towards the end, kind of giving a little bit of like a country flair almost. The whole thing definitely feels like kind of an ode to a uh, like an another toxic relationship. Keep me in the waiting room. I'll never know what will you do anymore. You'll hate the words I say to you. You never want to hear the truth anymore. Tell me that you have t the time, but I've been here since nearly nine and I can't seem to see the signs of anything anymore, anytime, never mind. Just straight up like abandoning Abandoning the concept at Nevermind is powerful. This one produced by Jeff Hazen and Alexander 23, dude. What? The same man who has worked alongside Olivia Rodrigo. I'm seeing a little connection here, dude. I'm, I'm just saying, I think it'd be a cool collab, bro. In the chorus, he goes back to these loving words like, you're perfect. You never make me feel like I'm a burden. You told me I should kill myself. Excuse me. That is the opposite of those things, sir. With pills that stay inside my shelf. I know for a fact I deserve it. Deserve it. So keep me in your waiting room. I'll wait for you forever. I'll wait for you. I'll wait for you, dude. He needs to leave this chick. This, this is clearly a bad relationship. Or leave this person. You told me that I was just never enough. You changed your mind, said that I was too much. You crossed the line and said you did it to toughen me up. Then you disappeared. I was a sucker to punch because I've been through many things. Everything, anything, anymore, anytime, never mind, anywhere, all at once. Everything, everywhere, all at once. And then back into the chorus of your perfect. Yeah, this is, this is, this is painful, bro. This is very painful. And it's kind of giving that whole like acoustic treatment too, where it's kind of like, it's nice to, to hear these like painful things with an acoustic background. Again, I will say, this kid's 18 years old, dude. 18 years old, bro. Yeah, I don't want to like, I don't want to like super focus on the young thing because I, there's, young people do shit incredibly good for a very long time. It, it's always, oh my God, look at this young person. It's never, oh my God, look at this old person. Okay, so I don't want to harbor on that too much, but the kid is just really fucking talented, bro. I'm not recording. What the fuck, dude? <sighs> Damn. I didn't press the fucking record button for the first, like, five songs. No matter how long I tell myself I've been doing YouTube, it humbles me. Guess what? Copyright's here. Gonna fuck your day up. Maybe this is a good thing, though, you know? Maybe this is actually good. Maybe I should adopt the persona of just fucking hating myself. That was my inhaler, obviously. You guys have never seen an inhaler before? The next one is called The Car. So we're heading somewhere, what kind of car? From his energy, definitely at like, like over 200,000 miles, beat the fuck up, but still kind of like classically cool. Oh, let's hear it, let's hear it. I was standing in the dark and I'm hoping that you saw me. Now I'm fucking in his car, you have a gun and call him back.
great song about having sex with somebody else's girlfriend. That was so good. He feels so, he, he feels so bad. <laughs> it's so funny because it's like you have this like old school masculine image of like, oh, yeah, the guy that steals the other guy's boyfriend or, you know, and he's made out to be this kind of douchebag. And I'm not saying those people don't exist, but like clearly he's. He's embodying this image of like this kid who like actually has feelings for this unreachable girl. So he finally gets a chance and they end up, you know, playing hide the sausage. But it just happens to be like in the guy's like car. And then you start feeling all of these like guilty ass feelings. It's just like, oh, it smells like him. Why do I know what he smells like? What the fuck is going on? All right. Next one is actually the title track of the entire album. We're getting into it six songs in. That's pretty long to get into it. I feel like I feel like having it right here tells me that it's like starting anew, you know. This is this is the actual like new like like something changes here. Oh. Oh, just the synths. And they're warm? I was younger than thought about doing me yet because I hated myself and the place to live. Thank God I didn't do it because it's all okay. Thank God I didn't do it because it's all okay. And the pain that you felt that it would eat you alive. But if you saw how we've been living, you'd be slightly surprised. So thank God I didn't do it because it's all okay. Thank God I didn't do it and it's all okay. For such a long time, didn't know if I'd change. Hate to say this because it sounds a bit gay. I care so much that I don't care. I care so much. What? Oh, the, the saxophone. Oh, they're just jamming. Oh, who's that? Ma maintenance? You talking to me? Oh, shit. What's up, man? Sorry. I'm I'm sorry, I didn't know they were coming. I've had so many issues, we had to restart stream. I wasn't recording the entire first half of the album. I broke down, I had a, men I had a, I had a mental breakdown, I jumped out the window. I did, I did jump out the window. And then after we restarted and I got the, I got the energy to redo it and not feel down about myself, fucking maintenance. What, 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 what's, uh, what's the philosophy called? If something's gonna go wrong, everything's gonna go wrong. Yeah, that wasn't the uh, part of the song. I straight up literally thought that was part of the song, but no, that, that was actually maintenance guy here to, here to jam out, actually. He's, he's a big Glaive fan. <laughs> uh, that song was unbelievably touching and, um, ridiculously, uh, cathartic to feel because he was expressing gratitude for not actually having left this earth by his own hands. And that is, um, lyrics? Anybody? Pain? Anybody? Hate to say this because it sounds a bit gay, but I'm really fucking happy that it ended this way. Dude, I love his humor, bro. It's just, <laughs> he's actually like probably a really fucking funny kid. It just kind of takes you out of the moment a little bit as well, but fuck it, you know? <laughs> it's still beautiful writing, you know? It really, it puts you in the mindset of what, you know, kids are still saying this shit today, you know? It's like, yeah, fuck. He, this is how we kind of relate in an in a, in a odd way. But, uh, yeah, he's fucking hilarious, bro. Thank God I didn't do it, because it's all okay. <sighs> then a transition over to this beautiful, beautifully harmonized acoustic guitar, saying, starting off saying the same line, thank God I didn't do it, and it's all okay. For such a long time, I didn't know if I'd change. Hate to say it, because it sounds a bit gay, but I, I'm really fucking happy that it ended that way. Like, it's just, he's, impl he's implementing humor into his life now on this other side of, of this, you know, the, the bottom, literally the bottom you could possibly feel. And it's beautiful, and it's written beautifully, and, the, and, it's, and it's gorgeous, and I love it. And this is a fantastic album so far. Holy shit. This does feel kind of like the start again. He's starting again his life again. Yeah, hate it because the, the <laughs> yeah, hate it because it sounds gay is absolutely a Maddie Healy esque lyric. The next song is all I do is try my best. You continue to try your best, bro. You go. You live your life. You succeed. How do you not root for him? Oh shit! Oh, the acoustic is so clear. 
all the all the all the cord. First year that I gotta pay my taxes. When I heard the number, thought about killing myself. Tried to buy wine, but they didn't have it. Mom and Dad, no, I miss you like hell. All I do is shine my best. He's so clear. He has an enunciation. Oh, me too, bro. Me too. Yeah. Damn. Oh my god, that's so... This is what I'm talking about, bro. He is capable of writing these pop smashes, dude. Can you imagine what this kid is gonna do? I feel like I'm watching my toast is fucking happen with this guy. He's just branching off and he's just becoming even better after each and everything. I believe in this man and I'm sorry for slapping you around, Mike. I'm sorry, Mike. He's 18 years old. And I can tell that he's 18 because he's talking about wanting to fucking kill himself when he sees his taxes due. Mom and dad know that I miss you like hell. Politics and all of this is kind of dumb, but I kind I find it kind of funny as well. I'm too busy is what he says to be anything else. That's that's the work ethic that he's reflecting on in the in American economy. Yeah. Glaive, an 18-year-old kid can see this. Clear as day. Oh, are you for real? Oh. You can have both. I'm I'm not hungry. It's okay. Dude. She got me a nini, bro. She got me a damn nini. Which reminds me of when I started getting into Glaive, which was back in the panini, the pandemic. Oh. I love you. Oh. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Here, I'll, I'll step out of the frame so you can just focus on them. You want me to be farther away? No, you don't need to leave it all. They don't care, but they don't care about me. Yes, they in do. These moments. They do no, care about you. No, when you're on screen, when you're on screen, that's all they care about. I don't have much to say. You don't want me on screen. I can't. I don't have the same energy he does. <laughs> Let's get back into the glaive with the next song, I'm Nothing, That's All I Am. I'm gonna sit my ass down. Oh, wait a minute, I know it, wait, what? Oh, no, 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 no. Cause you walked away from me, I counted every stride. God damn it, this happens every time. music video to this uh, to this song because if there is or if there isn't there needs to be some kind of fisheye angle where he's like crazy whipping his hair around in that fisheye angle i need that music video dude come on with like skate footage or some shit uh, these these skateboarders absolutely fucking biffing it dude just absolutely just eating the fucking ground and they should have like a skateboarding dog in there there should be like dogs and stuff because it'd be like an homage to like old dog new tricks oh Bachelor. Is it for the cat's poop or is it for? I think it. Bruh. No, I, I mean, I don't know. I, think it's I don't know. It has a cat on it, and it looks Bro. like they're squatting. I definitely think that's for cooking. Okay, cooking cat food. What did he say? I'm just curious. It's I'm a just curious with why. A cat. What do you mean? What? I'm just. I mean, it's really it's cute. Just it's just really it. cute. I'm just confused as to like if it's for something specific. I think it's. I think it's for cooking. Okay, cool. Yeah. Next tune, the prom. What's the fit look like? Cumberbun? I would always rock a cumberbun. I'm not gonna lie. Benedict Cumberbun? Yeah, that's what they called me. Because I'd always show up to the function Cumberbund out. And I'd, and I'd stash things in them. Piece of gum? <laughs> nah, you can't know. It's like my bat belt, you know? It's, my, it's like my utility belt. All right, let's go to prom. I skipped my high school prom. Okay, never mind. Now that part of me is gone. So I don't pick up my cars. Oh, 
King of something? Tell me that's not a One Piece reference right now. Tell me that's not a King of the Pirates! Love the little choking towards the end too. Oh, it's so good. It's such, it makes me excited to like learn the songs on guitar, you know? It rocks so hard in this like kind of like indie pop kind of way and it just feels great. It just feels great. There's like the little punk influences and you get the angst with like the chorus being loud and just being in that bah, bah, going up the octave with the why do I do that? Oh, and I love the way that he's kind of handling like the two part choruses. He's like staying catchy, he's staying, you know, interesting in the chorus. And then in his verses, he really just bears his all heart, dude. Starts off saying that he, that he, he skipped his high school prom. Giving us the fake out, dude. Now the part of me is gone, so I don't pick up my calls at all. He's changed because he feels like he's missed out on this specific, very, you know, integrated part of, of, of youth, of teenage American youth. Interesting conversation about that. Remember that night when all the things were all right, I wasn't there and y'all didn't care? Talking about his friends who were at prom and how, how they didn't care that he wasn't there, but he was really dealing with some shit. Slightly, I told you that I don't mind it. The look on my face said, I'm lying, I'm lying. He's lying to himself, telling them that he doesn't care about his friends not caring. Oh, dude. And then asking himself all the while, why do I do that? Why, why do I put myself in these situations where, where I just feel so alone and I isolate myself. Verse two, he said that he'll be the king or the queen of something, but right now I'm just the king and queen of nothing. I'm embarrassed, so I just stay at my parents. I'm terrified of my hometown, petrified that I've let them down. Wild. This is reading like a, like a, just like a, a, a comic book, dude. Like all of these in, in, inner feelings he's, he's putting so eloquently onto the, you know, pen, the quill. All right, next tune, Tiziana. It's explicit. Tiziana. I don't know. I, I don't know any Tizianas. I, I, I don't know. That's a very, very unique name, actually. Just palm muting. has been through some shit, bro. this chorus sounds like and y'all might call me crazy but it literally sounds like a chorus that could be on speak now picture just 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 picture an ai taylor swift singing the chorus of this song okay cross my mind for far too many nights so this one's for all the times you let me down and all the times you left me out to dry i never got the chance to ask you 
Why? Why do you think that? I'll just ignore it. Like when you called in New York, she loves a good New York line. Scream down the phone, I'm a whore. Oh, dude. And you screamed more and hung up on your end. I am sorry. I, 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 look, look, it's giving speak now energy. That's all I'm saying, man. That's all I'm saying. And it sounds good as fuck too. Like it, do, it, do, it is kind of one of the tracks that I feel like maybe don't grab me as much as some of the other ones definitely do, but it's still a solid like closing end of the album kind of song. Cause it's looking back on this relationship that he's had. That's, uh, that's just been toxic the entire time and he's over it. And he's like, I'm just, I, I, I don't know. I don't care. You were gone. She was there. I can't save myself. Damn. Maybe, maybe, maybe I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe he is like kind of asking for a little bit of like, maybe he was the one that cheated because he says you were gone and she was there. I can't save myself. Like he needs saving. Maybe I asked for too much. Maybe I don't give a fuck. I should ask for help. You and I, we fell in love, but even that wasn't enough for all the times you let me down, for all the times you left me out to dry. I never got the chance to ask you why. Actually, I think I might be flipping the script on this one. He might deserve this. If he, if he was the one that cheated, this song makes a lot of sense. And uh, I kind of see it as maybe like an apology that he's trying to give her, even though he's not really apologizing in it. Yeah, this one I actually kind of don't like a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So so we got maybe one skipper so far. The next one is entitled I've Made Worse Mistakes. We're still sympathizing with the, with the, with the guy. We're still sympathizing with him. But damn, he clearly has made some fucking mistakes, right? Oh shit. Oh dude. Of course I wish that I could stay, but we both I love that. I've got to go. Oh, dude, it starts uh, off with these gr kind of like grungy, open-ended, you know, not... Oh, dude, that's so that's so strong, bro. I love... And I love the crunch on these guitars, too. You started going to therapy. Fucking finally. Oh, damn! Of course you'll do some things you wish you never did. Like dating that girl, she was such a bitch. Ooh. And I hate the stuff and touch you said it's time like this. Okay. All right. So clearly he's, he's admitting to not being perfect. And I think that takes a lot of guts, but he's also saying that she was also really shitty. So it's like a mutual, <laughs> it's a mutual, oh, damn, I guess that is just like toxicity. That's really a toxic relationship. When you know you're both not good for each other. Ugh. This song and the last one has kind of been this like apologetic, like come to come to, you know, terms moment. One with uh, Tiziana and then one with himself being Ash. Dude, this is like a therapy kind of it's giving like the steps of of trying to like literally heal from this like feeling like he really is. Thank you. I'm having a hard time with words, but yes, he is reflecting. He's very being very introspective. It's a therapy type of beat. Okay. The next one is the good, the bad, and the Olga. The Olga. Isn't it supposed to be ugly? Or saying that Olga is ugly? That's fucked up, dude. Why would you do that? Reminds me of this, uh, reminds me of this, this gal I've been seeing. I get Olga, Olga energy from her. You know what I mean? She's oozing Olga energy. Eh, oozing is a little yeah. much. I like that guitar, that back and forth. Back to this dude. Oh my god.
Dude. Oh my god. I'm I'm not totally seeing like a like a linear story with this album, but it definitely is starting to feel like he's really showing up and being like, this is how I used to be. This is the good, this is the bad, it's the Olga. You know, the, the Olga is actually a, a completely different person. It's the person in the past that he used to be. And he's just owning up to like how fucking shitty of a person that he actually was. In the outro, he says, I'm damn near apologetic, but I'm far from empathetic. Means he'll apologize for all this shit. He'll feel sorry after he did it. Obviously, you know, you, you're going to feel regret after you and, you know, end your life. And it's like, but he's still so, he was still so incapable of being empathetic towards the people that are actually miss him. And it's sad as fuck. Yeah, this is, damn, this is sad. This is fucking sad, bro. And it feels like through the, you know, through the production, he's really just trying to like force it out. Like he's really just sh shoving the sponge through the hole, like really hard, especially with all the lines about the gun in the chorus. Before I take a gun, I'm going to do something I should have done. Ah, to be just so blunt with it too, it takes guts to write shit like this. I can understand how some people might say it's too much. It feels cathartic as fuck. And it feels like a good end of the album kind of feeling to have. It's just like, I'm just over this shit. The next one is called 2005 Barbie Doll. I would have pegged you as an Oppenheimer kind of guy, honestly. <laughs> but nah, nah. Two tickets for Barbie, please. <laughs> I was I, Honestly, back in 2005, I was more of a bionicle kind of guy, you know? I was also dropped on my head as a child, so... Oh my god. If the money wasn't coming, then all the people here would leave. Do you know how hard it is to stomach? All the bass change. That they'll toss you out whenever they play. Oh, fuck these bitches. I'm in a place they want to be But it costed me almost everything <sighs> Fuck man, that guitar is uh, unbelievably gorgeous And just that sample repeating, come on Damn Like he's completely not even in the story anymore. Like, okay, Vocals no, changing. Just stop talking, lady. Have an opening. I will do my Who is this bitch? Make sure she doesn't go anywhere. I'm gonna go search her car. And I'd already said It's his mom? Time. And I'm like thinking to myself, oh my god, he's gonna find all the drugs. It's really a riveting story. <laughs> no, it's good. It's good. Sorry. Love ya. Bye. Oh, man. Oh, yeah, it says right here, outro, uh, Glaive and Rebecca uh, Gutierrez. So that is his mom. Damn. Okay, Mr. Gutierrez, it's nice to meet you on the track. Hello. All right, go ahead, continue the story. So he was so obnoxious. He was like, inside, leave those dogs there. And I was like, okay, and will you just make sure that, that they don't, like, jump out? Just stop talking, lady. I'll do my job. He's like... They're just little dogs. Leave it alone. Go inside. She's going on and on about this damn dog. Obviously, the whole front half of the song before this is so heavy, and it feels so just, it's just like, damn, man, this entire album, you know, we've been feeling for this kid. It, it, clearly, he's made some mistakes. He's reached the bottom of his fucking life. He's gone through the fucking trenches, man. And now, finally, what do we get as an outro? This absolutely gorgeous acoustic guitar, math, tapping, some goddamn Andy McKee on, on, on the strings. And this little outro where it's just him and his mom and she's just telling a, a funny little story. She sounds like she has a British accent. I don't know if she's British, but I mean, that's that's wild, bro. And she's made this picture. Obviously, it's, it's some like officer or some shit like that. And he's searching, his, searching, searching her car. And it's just a funny ass story, bro. And it's so funny to hear him just be like, clearly he, it sounds like he's heard her qualms and stuff, you know, with her and her little dogs all the time. And she's running into all these things like her mom usually is. And he just, <laughs> she just says the drug line. And he's like, wow, that's a crazy story. <laughs> he's kind of just zoned out. And he's just like, damn, just back in real life, you know? And he's kind of echoed that fact too, that it's like, you know, all of this stuff is so heavy and crazy in my mind. And, you know, my depression is, is insane. And my, you know, thoughts have been, you know, in a, a really bad place. But at the end of the day, I know that I'm just going to be okay. 
And just like at the end of the album, he's fine. He's just in there <laughs> listening to his mom's story. It's beautiful, man. <sighs> yeah, it is. It is really pretty. And it's, it's cool that it's put under this little guise, too, of like this 2005 Barbie doll. It's just like, that's funny. Maybe he thinks of his mom as like a little 2005 like Barbie doll. And I like the end of this super heavy album being this lighthearted. So if you made it this far, thank you so much for tuning in. Holy shit, we laughed, we cried, we went through it. And as for a debut album, uh, this traverses a lot of glaive, dude. And I loved it, dude. Despite all the issues that we had, a stream and everything, if you stuck it out with us, you might as well subscribe. You might as well check out the Patreon. You might as well see all these whole strings put together. Like and subscribe. You know, follow me on all my socials. You know the drill. That's it. Thank you so much. As always, stay happy, healthy, and strong. And I'll see you in the next one. But I can see